want to bring you in in terms of uh, she just mentioned of the houses and of course we have seen some um, some level of dependency other than independence in terms of the decisions they make looking at the uh, standard that was in the senate a few months ago in terms of the revenue sharing mm -hmm. moving forward with the lessons learned from uh, people aspiring to become politicians or becoming leaders for that sake and of course looking into the politicians who are currently in here moving forward to the next year do we do do, do we see a uh, a house or a leadership that ha has learned a lesson of uh, leaning to one side and then affecting the people that or the needs of the people that you are supposed to represent in the house. Will we see a more independent house? As, as we approach 2022, we are not going to we are not going to see that situation. In fact, there is going to be more division as we approach 2022 because. We are approaching now the political period. It's 2022. And by next year, we'll be saying that election will be the following year. So I, I foresee a situation where there will be more div sharper division. And the problem that uh, my sister has highlighted, when there was a purge within the Jubilee and the House leadership was changed, more specifically in Senate, where Murkomen, Susan Kihika, and uh, Professor Kindiki were removed from their respective position. And these were the people who were shaping the Jubilee agenda in, in Senate. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were very instrumental in passing most of the Jubilee decision in the Senate. And Kenyans were shocked when the revenue bill was stalled in Parliament because the Irungu Kangata, Samuel Pogisho, and Professor Kamar team failed to convince and whip Senate to pass the Jubilee uh, Revenue Bill. And it ended up in a situation where there was a team which was formed. Fortunately or unfortunately, among the people in that team were the, lead, were the people who had been removed from the leadership position. So you can clearly see the issue is not about just uh, the changing of leaders, but when you, we are changing some leaders or when you are changing leadership position, we must look at the people who are going to replace the others in that position. Because uh, if they do not fit the bill, we are going to suffer. And that is the situation where we ended up dragging the bill. Counties did not receive money in time. And even up to date, counties have not received a single penny counties are collapsing so what i expect and what i know is that going to next year we are going to have more politics starting mm -hmm. with the by elections that are already up so we are going to have a, a more sharper and divided uh, parliament and senate mm -hmm. just 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 to add on what he has said i think the reason why we've I don't want to call it a quagmire, but the reason why we find us, ourselves in such a situation is because political parties in this country do not have ideologies they stand for. So today, ODM stands for this. Two years down the line, they change. But when political parties in this country will reach to a level, we have ideologies we can defend. It doesn't matter who comes in. You see, the reason why the, when Keheka was removed, Murkolmen was removed is because Jubilee in itself, you know, the ideologies, they sh keep shifting goalposts. But if Jubilee had an agenda, which they started maybe uh, in, the, in, in 2013, that they yeah, stand the for. The big four agenda. Yeah, the big four agenda or whatever. But they keep shifting. So today the focus is uh, dealing with Ruto. The, the next thing is focusing. You know, ideologies keep changing. But what I'm trying to expand is this. If political parties mm -hmm. set up ideologies, set, set up manifesto to the extent, even after 2022, and let's say even Ruto or Uhuru does not uh, cease to exist because we're human beings. People can die anytime, you know, when you cease to exist. But can they outlive, can you be outlived by that? Why am I saying that? When you look at developed countries, they have ideologies. The, the only thing is that the ideologies meta, uh, they, they just metamorphosize, right? Mm -hmm. But the principle remains the same. So if it's freedom, freedom is protected throughout for over 200 years. But in Kenya, we find ideologies keep changing. 
yani it's different from how you began and how you went is two totally different things yeah, to the point you cannot even underline what is the basic principle they were actually fighting for mm -hmm. so having said that it means if jubilee had a proper manifesto you know you can say you have big four agendas but what is your underlying principle at the end of the day mm -hmm. when 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 odm says it's democracy w what is this democracy that you're talking about at the end of the day to the point it doesn't matter who comes into power because once they come into power those ideologies what we mm -hmm. we will shield them and, and we will even direct them in the way that they should literally actually go but because we don't have uh, well established ideologies as a country even Mm -hmm. you, end up, you end up having the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. All right. Yeah. Be it as it may, Joe, mm. uh, what major policies would you say have been passed this year that have benefited the Mwanainchi big time? The policies that we have seen this year, majorly we can start with uh, in terms of infrastructure. One thing that we must give Jubilee mm -hmm. and uh, its government and with all its problem mm -hmm. that it has managed to to perform is the infrastructure mm -hmm. in terms of roads, in terms of water, in terms of electricity. Jubilee has performed very well mm -hmm. compared to other government. If you look at the records in terms of tarmac road mm -hmm. from 2013 up to date and from 2013 back, mm -hmm. you can see there's a there's a sharp rise. Mm -hmm. If you look at your electricity connectivity, despite the fact, and you must be aware of the issues that are ongoing in KPLC. Yeah, the solar. The, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but there has been, uh, people have been connected to the electricity from all, uh, mm -hmm. all areas. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in other areas that Jubilee had proper policies, Mm -hmm. but has failed in terms of implementation mm -hmm. is you can get the in terms of legislation the the work that uh, parliament and senate have done in terms of implementing legislation you can cite something that is very quick and has impacted the youth of this country is to do with gambling <laughs> you have seen the policies that you really have come up with gambling <laughs> and matiangi has had the fights with the mm -hmm. gambling companies mm -hmm. Though, that is a significant issue to some extent, we have reduced the rate of gambling in this country, mm -hmm. and we are looking to to help our brothers and sisters. We've, we've become real hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> then there's, a, there's other policies mm -hmm. which, in terms of implementation, it has been now it has turned out to be corruption. Because if you look at uh, <laughs> the if you look at uh, food security, mm -hmm. and that is uh, coming up with irrigation schemes. You have seen a good project, a project that was going to help the people mm. has been messed up because of corruption story. That is Aurora and Kimwarel. That is not to say that Aurora and Kimwarel money has been stolen or somebody stole the money, but corruption was used to stop the project. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the Kenyans are not being told the truth. Is that the the corruption the alleged corruption in Aurora and Kimwarel was used to stop the project. Uh, if you look at, because, why am I saying that? The same model that is being used in Aurora and Kimwarel of financing the project is the same model that was used to finance SGR. So unless you are telling me corruption, there is corruption in uh, Aurora and Kimwarel, then there is corruption with SGR. Mm -hmm. You cannot point it as a one of the one of the projects of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Then another issue I must not miss to say this because as a young person in this country, mm -hmm. Jubilee had a fantastic manifesto and policies to promote the youth. Mm -hmm. But in one way or another in terms of implementing, Jubilee has failed the youth. You can remember the youth fund issues mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. enterprise where the CEO squandered money mm -hmm. and the project ended up you, the youth council and its politics right. has collapsed so and in terms of now youth being represented mm -hmm. and seeing a youth being appointed in a state uh, position and a political arena mm -hmm. we have been shortchanged positions that require youth to be given that position they have ended up to the older <laughs> older guys and we respect them now, it does not mean that we don't respect them. We respect them, mm -hmm. but for heaven's sake, those positions, and if you look at the dynamics of this world, 
certain position must be held by somebody mm -hmm. who falls within that bracket. Wisdom comes with age. <laughs> so <laughs> they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, forward, there are some one or two things that uh, Jubilee has really tried, but it has, uh, here it has had uh, some shortcomings. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, Beatrice, mm. uh, what would you say has been the hits of 2020 and the misses? Ah, 2020, the, the one of the greatest miss definitely was how uh, COVID was handled. Uh, that one I will keep on hammering. Actually, you're coming. Yeah, I will keep on hammering because livelihoods have been lost. Mm -hmm. And being an economist, I don't know how long it will take for the country to recover because the effects would be felt even five years to come. Mm -hmm. Because big corporations have sunk, big uh, companies have sunk down and sunk with the common money did. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, I, I will just agree with my brother. One of the the, the, the greatest uh, thing, um, the highlight uh, uh, of this uh, current situation that uh, the Jubilee has been in, it's true, infrastructure has really improved and I'm glad marginalized uh, communities have been able to access uh, infrastructure in terms of even hospitals. I even saw Kirigoya now is having a very, uh, I think almost a level six kind of a hospital. That That is good news. Kakamega, the same thing. It, it's not only now in central that you find people are being uh, built for hospitals, but you can go even to a jail, there's a new hospital coming up, uh, people can access uh, medical services. Uh, but apart from buildings now, where the, the, what is it, where the issue now is really now testing uh, this government is in terms of human resource. That is where there is a very hiccup. They, they are very nice. Even in Kajiando, they, they have a very good uh, infrastructure when it comes to hospitals. So infrastructure, apart from the roads and the electricity, we have seen hospitals coming up, even to the interior parts of the country where you could not have access to uh, health care services. So that is a big gap. But now it's one thing to have building. It's another thing to have functional, uh, functional building. That that that's where the, the the issue is. So functionality of this, even Odaya, you know, they opened Odaya. Odaya, uh, it's now an annex of KNH, which is good because who would have thought in Odaya people would uh, have uh, such a high level kind of a facility? But now what has led Odaya Hospital mm -hmm. not to be open is because of human resource. So it became a hitch. Mm -hmm. So people wondering who will incur the cost of of being uh, the healthcare workers. So uh, I think uh, what we need to learn from all these aspects, it's true, they had good, you know, we are very good at uh, paper, you know, we're writing, you know, it's, a, it's like writing a very good composition. Mm -hmm. But the only way we can know that you are, that your theory works is when it's, when it's put to the test, when it's put for practicals, mm -hmm. and we can see results. So I think that's where the challenge of the Jubilee government has been. They were very good theoretically, maybe nice papers. <gasps> anyway, when they talk, they said nine stadiums, my friend, nine, nine stadiums. <laughs> so maybe it would absorb the gambling issue because <laughs> the youth would have been engaged. But think about it. But paper is very good. Even at the end, they have very good power. But when the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. that's where the problem is. So that's one. So and the hindrance to implementation in all these aspects, even this whole COVID uh, billionaire issue. So they had a good plan. Let's get PPEs for the healthcare workers. It's a very good plan on paper. But when it came to implementation, what was the greatest hindrance? Greed, because greed brews corruption. So greed among us, our leaders, greed among us, our value system as Kenyans, that greed is what is killing implementation of very good projects on paper. Because the moment we remove greed and corruption, ubi nafsi, I call it ubi nafsi, every Kenyan thinks of themselves. And you know, the problem is you cannot sleep in 10 houses at the same time. You cannot sleep in 10 women at the same time. It's always one, it's one at the same time. You cannot be eating 10 plates at the same time. We need to understand that. And the moment you understand that, it means you implement something because you love the people and the benefit it will bring to the people. Mm -hmm. But because of corruption, we have very good paper written, but implementing it becomes a very difficult. So Jubilee, mm -hmm. a government, has had very good things on paper. They have tried to implement, but even those roads and infrastructures they have built, the cost has been tripled ten times. Finally, maybe Odaya has already been uh, in a jengua. But when you look at how much it would have cost the taxpayer, it would have been way cheaper 
than how it, uh, than the current cause that it, it, it has been incurred. Okay. So until we, we solve that issue of greed, obinafsi, that corruption aspect, mm -hmm. maybe Odaya would have been way cheaper building it mm -hmm. than the resources that remained would have maybe hired mm -hmm. the healthcare personnel. You know, the, that will would not have been mm -hmm. there. But because of greed, the cost is up to the point there's no money remaining to hire, mm -hmm. to hire, to hire, to hire the, the, the healthcare worker. All right, in the interest of time, we have to move to a different matter, and maybe probably this is where we will finish. It's still in politics, mm -hmm. we had the impeachment of governors. Mm -hmm. Two of, uh, two of them have been impeached, uh, one of them survived, and if you look at the uh, the the accusations are similar. So the question is, Mbona, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you must highlight on the, the three impeachment uh, we have had mm -hmm. the, that one of Governor oh, Waiguru, and Waiguru, Waiguru, that one of uh, Waititu, uh, Waititu and, uh, and that Sonko. one of Sonko. Mm -hmm. You can see the inconsistency in the, in the in the way those impeachment uh, have been handled. Mm -hmm. One, the way you have highlighted, all of them had similar accusation. All of them were approved by the county assemblies, mm -hmm. but the issue was at the Senate, and the biggest. Uh, issue out of it was the political correctness within Senate mm -hmm. because these 26 senators who voted to impeach Sonko and voted to impeach uh, Waititu are the same 26 who protected Waiguru mm -hmm. and inconsistency in the sense that uh, the procedure in impeaching Waititu and the procedure in impeaching Sonko was mishandled in the sense that the two-third majority was not achieved at the county assembly. Mm -hmm. But Senate went and upheld the impeachment. But Waiguru's impeachment achieved the two-third at the county assembly, mm -hmm. but she was saved at the Senate. So you can see the inconsistent. But uh, out of it, what Kenyans must learn from it is that some people, you must be able to please your political godfathers. If you annoy your political <laughs> godfather, you are not going to be saved mm -hmm. in terms of <laughs> in politics in this country. Mm -hmm. So the big boys are the ones who determine who to be saved mm -hmm. and who mm -hmm. to be chopped. <laughs> All right, Beatrice, sanitize Elisha time ya sonko. This <laughs> 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 you see, sanitization is a very it's detrimental mm -hmm. to, to the to the development of this country. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying that? It's because you'll have a rogue leader who robs people, robs the country, uh, in, you know, hinders development, but because they are lying mm -hmm. yeah, to somebody, mm -hmm. then they go scot free. Mm -hmm. No, that for me is, um, I think it's backwardness. I would yeah. put it is so much backwardness because if, uh, if the law is partial, you know, it, it favors some, mm -hmm. disfavors others, then why was the law there in the first place? Why was it there in the first place? So if one does not achieve two-thirds of the MCAs, they go home. Another one achieves the two-thirds of the MCAs, mm -hmm. they stay. That means the law is partial. Mm -hmm. Right, and that also shows impunity in itself. It means we, as a, a people, we disregard the rule of law. In essence, why, why then would you waste money creating a law only for you not to observe it? Mm -hmm. It was better we live like um, you know, uncouth people, you know, primitive people, you know, everybody to, to live as they wish. Because why is there a law in the first place? So. Having looked at that, it means that going forward, uh, Kenyans then should ask themselves, even now, this whole BBI thing, if we cannot uphold the law, someone was actually saying, if Uhuru was not observing the law, and even Raila is not also observing the law, 
right? Mm -hmm. There are there are many instances that they have uh, they have gone against the law, right? Mm -hmm. Then they come back to us. They want us to amend the same law that they themselves will not not observe. You see, it's it's like short changing the the masses. That's literally short changing the masses. So, uh, and I think that is what Maraga in the Chief Justice was trying to fight to try and say, let's uphold the law so that the law can 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 enable us to prevail because if the law is upheld i'm telling you there will be no uh violence if the law is upheld people will not fight brother against brother because we 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 are we are respecting the rule of the land mm -hmm. but because of the impunity which we learn from our leaders that that case that we have just seen of the impeachment it means tomorrow somebody will fight but because they can run to the capital yeah, the capital hill yeah, we can run there very fast then all your sins have been forgiven. And yet people have really suffered. You <laughs> get So uh, the, the unfortunate thing with all these um, impeachments, uh, even for 82 and, uh, and, and Sonko, they look like they are from the same caliber. You know, the way they behave, they are good, <laughs> yeah, the, the way they act. Mm -hmm. It seems that uh, the, the system was trying to read uh, the street, the, street politics. The street kind of, <laughs> the populace. Because mm -hmm. because Wengoro is not a pop, uh, she's not uh, very favorable with the population. But these two, mm -hmm. looking at how you know, Mawe, you know, look at how they <laughs> act, you know, they they're so similar, mm -hmm. and yet the same system trying to uh, remove them out. It it must have been due to very uh, sinister moves. Maybe they were being sanitized because of the uncouthness <laughs> and their lack their lack of decorum mm -hmm. to put it because. Even them having big governors in the first place, people really wondered uh, which route did they use, you know, for <laughs> such a Which route did they use? Because when you look at this individual... The voice of the people. <laughs> the voice of the people. Because, uh, and, I, and I think this is why we, we can agree the city hall politics. Look at how Sonko uh, began. He removed the gather. Frustrated him, frustrated him to the point the guy is like, ah, I was better off being in the banking sector. There was structure, there was, all right. Then the next thing when Igade is off, oh, what happens? Elaki is the next person to be. Mm -hmm. And even you look at the Ben Botuta that we are talking about that is being subjected. This is another uncouth, uh, someone with no decorum, somebody who has not even gone to school, being, being propelled again. So it beats logic. Why do you remove one who has no decorum? And then now you want to propose. Actually, there's an argument going on that uh, Igade did not resign properly and IBC still holds the record that we have a deputy governor who is Igade. Mm -hmm. So do we, do we have a, a scenario where he comes back and uh, he says, oh, well, me I have been here. The whole world. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans know mm -hmm. Igade resigned. Mm -hmm. But the electoral body? <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> see, uh -huh. the issues surrounding Nairobi, mm -hmm. you can see the issues surrounding Nairobi starting way back mm -hmm. from the election period. Where, I, if you remember during the Jubilee nomination, at one mm -hmm. moment, Sonko was denied clearance at Jubilee mm -hmm. for certain issues were highlighted. Then later on, Sonko was given clearance at the last minute and he ended up defeating Peter Kenneth. The same, same issues that were raised at that moment are the same issues that were raised the other day when Sonko was being impeached. So let us not take Kenyans for a ride. Yeah. And the Nairobi politics have been made in a sense that there are certain people seated somewhere in a comfortable sitting room with AC. Mm -hmm. They just manipulate Nairobi <laughs> politics. <laughs> They switch this gear, tomorrow they switch another gear, the following day they switch another gear. But may I want to remind Nairobians, because I'm not a voter here in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> I want to remind Nairobians that democracy is not an event. Democracy is a process. It starts by identifying a leader. You identify a leader, you look at the qualities of this person. Is he eligible to, to be a leader? in terms of integrity, in terms of his vision and agenda manifesto. You interrogate all of those things. Then you go to an election. That person wins. If that person is elected, he takes the office. Democracy dictates that now 
he must be accountable to the common mwananchi mm -hmm. he must implement or he must go ahead and start uh, building what he promised the mwananchi as we interrogate that person so what democracy offers you is this eh? mm -hmm. within five years you must interrogate this person so that you determine if he's suitable for mm -hmm. the next election right but in our current situation we people are going to blame and people are going to make uh, an assumption that democracy failed the people of nairobi mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. nairobians were given an opportunity in 2013 they had dr evans kidero mm -hmm. A very, <laughs> a very, a very, a very nice guy. Somebody who has achieved everything mm -hmm. within the corporate world, mm -hmm. but into politics, he failed. He X. failed. A big X. The Nairobians <laughs> say that. Let's change. <laughs> yeah. Now, quick, quick reactions. Quick reactions. Medics are on strike. Yeah. Uh, now the whole you call them CAD <laughs> you know, on strike. Quick reactions as we finish up. Yeah. Where are we heading? I think it's a very sad state of affairs mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know a strike within a pandemic it's a very dangerous dangerous thing mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I think I, I have reached to a resolution this is my own opinion uh, whereby the healthcare sector should be similar to security I think the government need to sit down as much as it's a profession but it reaches to a level it's almost similar to security uh, and uh, we need to find a solution to stop these kind of strikes in the future and and, uh, and and i agree the medics themselves are also not clean they are not cleaner they are not white as no that we must agree they, are, they, they, they also have their own faults and their own issues uh, but be as it may the government needs to sit down and solve this problem once and for all. And I, I am not advo an advocate for unions within such a noble profession because it's, there is a reason why it's a noble profession. Here it's, we are talking about lives of individuals. And that's why you're seeing Mutai Kago and saying, and even uh, Baba, he was very much castigated the other time, mm -hmm. uh, where they were saying, but you took an oath to defend life. You see, you took an oath before you received money in your pocket. You have to defend a life because a life cannot be bought back. A life cannot be... Need. But then they also must understand mm -hmm. that this doctor also has needs, and uh, this nurse also has needs at home that need to be met. You see, so it, there's, a, there's a very, uh, what is it called, there's a tug of war because they are told to defend a life on this end, but in my home there is no gully to eat. You see, it's a very mm. great tug of war, so we need to reach to a level just like the police officer. As much as it's paid peanuts, there's no one that the police officer will decide okay. that we leave the, the borders open. Okay, yeah. very fast. On, on, on a health uh, crisis, what I can say that the cardinal, the cardinal role of a government is to protect the lives and property mm. of its people. Yes. On this one, uh, the government has failed to protect the life of Kenyans. And the issue around all this problem starts with the priority. If the government can prioritize its issue and put the health sector as the first issue, education the second issue, the national and our economy and national debt third issue, as we go along, then we have their BBI. We will have the right way of solving the problems that we are facing as a country. All right, thank you so much, Beaches and uh, Joe, for coming and speaking to us and trying to put things into perspective. And back home. Thank you so much for staying with us. We'll be taking a very short break. When we come back, to be time for career. They have been my guest, Beaches Cairo, a health economist and political analyst, and uh, Joe. Uh, Kalende, political analyst. Thank you so much. See you in a bit. I'm Dereva Hillary.